In the event of a recession, things could look much worse. Stop spending so much fucking money. It, they, they, they said it right over here that things are changing. Their own words, life as we knew it before the pandemic is not going to go back. Spend less money. I have to do that in my household. I have to do that in my business. If there's going to be a downturn, if things change, you have to do it too. Suck it up and deal with it. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. Over here, we have Mr. Clinton the cat. We're going to start off the video with Mr. Clinton. Mr. Clinton? Can you meow for us? Mr. Clinton. All right. Well, he's not as excited as he used to be, but at least he's here with me. That's what matters. So today's video is going to be on this Business Insider article that was sent to me by Bruce, a regular viewer who often has good comments. This says, the office apocalypse is upon us. Now, there are some points this article gets right, and there are some points that I think that this article misses the point on. And I'd like to go over it with you all. So it says even two and a half years later, most city downtowns aren't back to where they were pre-pandemic. No shit. There are consequences of destroying your economy. However, there are some things that were kind of not sustainable pre-COVID that I'd like to go over in this particular video. Now, it says, not unlike how deindustrialization led to abandoned factories and warehouses, the pandemic has led downtowns into a new period of transition. And one thing that's really important to understand is that this is not just a pandemic. Before the pandemic happened back in summer of 2019, when I was looking for a new store location, I we streamed myself just walking around the city, checking out new places, showing you the real estate. And one thing that a lot of you m mentioned is, wow, I thought New York City had a lot of business. Why do all these stores have retail space for lease signs on them? Virtually every block you walk down, there would be three or five retail space for lease signs that had been there for several years for a business that had went out of business a long time ago. And it's because of stuff like this. So this was a place advertising 1,800 square feet for $10,000. 1,800 square feet, $10,000. And when you actually measure it over here with a laser measuring tool, which was very, very, very useful to me during that time, you'll see it's actually 839 square feet, which is less than half of what they were advertising. So A, people kind of get tired of being lied to. They don't want to get literally less than half the space that was being advertised. And B, even if they were being honest in their advertising, what the fuck are you going to do with 838 square feet for $10,000 a month? Like, there, there are few legitimate businesses that are going to be able to pay that and actually make something make sense out of it versus using um, space in almost any other part of the country where people are not insane and liars. And this is something that's genuinely important to discuss. There was a store that I was looking to rent on 8th Street in 2011, and we were going to go through with it for $4,000 a month. It was about 400 square feet for $4,000 a month, a little smaller than my old store that I had before I moved. And they decided to go with a tenant that had a longer business history, better credit score, all that. Okay, whatever. Fine, understandable. I went back to that place in 2019. It had not changed. Literally, the inside of that place was like somebody had just archive.org the building. Nothing had changed. The sign from the old tenant was there. The junk the old tenant left behind. When I walked through that store, it's still there eight years later. And to this day, you could still go there and see that particular store. It's very, very weird. There's a lot of places where landlords either won't rent it or they'll, they'll rent it if you're willing to pay 500 a square foot or something crazy like that. When you look at the asking rent for many of these places that I was showing you, this was a restaurant that you were not allowed to open in New York City because of the Cuomo and the Blasio of the time. This it was about similar size to my store with a little bit of outdoor seating here. You know, you see, see space for about seven people to eat outside and this place was $42,000 a month. This store was approximately half the size of my current store. And uh, this is me, me assuming New York City lost fee, yeah, 998 uh, square feet. My current store is 2,200, and they wanted $25,000 a month. You had literally buildings like this, which were look like complete dumps. This looked like a bomb went off by it. And this building was going for, let me see, was this over a million? Yeah, here we go, $1.3 million. And the sad thing is somebody probably bought that thing. This is something that's been going on for a very long period of time. And it's very difficult to tell whether it is they don't want to sell it, but they just don't want to admit it, or is it just that they just don't want to sell it. But regardless of whether which one's the case, this was something that needed to pop a long time before COVID ever happened. And after the city made sure to just you nail the coffin into every last small business in the city that was actually trying to get by, that's when it was finally noticeable, like, oh crap, 
a lot of the stuff is empty. Even small declines in foot traffic and real estate use compounding over time will lead to reduced tax revenue and sales receipts for small businesses, ultimately affecting city budgets. And while city planners are reimagining downtowns, the impact on city's bottom lines have been devastating. In New York, for instance, the value of commercial real estate declined by 45% in 2020, and research suggests it will remain 39% below pre-pandemic levels. And again, as I said, because it is too fucking expensive. We're not even talking about Midtown Manhattan here. We're talking about a not exactly great area of Brooklyn by any stretch of the imagination. And this piece of shit over here was going for 1.3 million effing dollars. That is insane. Again, none of this makes any sense. And that's, it, it's going to, this needed a correction before COVID ever happened. And the problem that I have is that as long as we're on this kick where we blame COVID for the fact that the real estate is empty, then we have an excuse. We can say, oh, once we get past it, or once the vaccination rate is this, or once it goes away, this, that, and the other, if we can just get people to go back to work, then all of this will be fixed. No, it was broken before COVID. The increased cancellations of office leases have created the office real estate market. A study led by Arpit Gupta, a professor of finance at New York University School Stern of Business, characterized the value wipeout as an apocalypse. It estimated that for $453 billion in real estate value would be lost across U.S. cities with a 17 percentage point decline in lease revenue from January 2020 to May 2022. The shock to real estate valuations has been sharp. One building in San Francisco's Mission District that sold for $397 million in 2019 is now on the market for about $155 million, a 60 percent decline. And yet, in my, I'm not an expert on San Francisco, but I'm going to take a couple of wild guesses on San Francisco as somebody who lived in New York for 33 years. I'm going to take a guess that that was not worth $397 million in 2019. And the person who bought it overpaid and they got screwed. So that building did not have a 60% decline. That building was never worth that to begin with. Somebody was dumb enough to buy it for that amount and is now realizing what it is actually worth. Across the country, public transportation ridership remains stuck at about 70% of pre-pandemic levels. If only 56% of employees of financial firms in New York are in the office on a given day, the health of a city's urban core is negatively affected. Yes, less people equals less business, and insane rents were always based on foot traffic. This is something that I like to call the hot girl paradox. So everybody here has, at some point in their life, likely met somebody that thought that it was okay that they treat people poorly because they were incredibly, incredibly attractive, like a 10 out of 10 on the attractiveness scale. They were able to treat people poorly and get away with it. Not treat everybody poorly, but treat a good amount of people not very nice and get away with it, get promotions that maybe they shouldn't have gotten, stuff like that because they were just out of this world gorgeous. And I like to apply that hot girl paradox to New York City. New York City was able to, because they had so much foot traffic and so many people, to treat people like shit, to have insanely high tax rates, to have horrible city services, to not take care of things, to treat businesses like shit, everything else, to have ridiculous $500 per square foot rents, to be able to lie about the size of the every single fucking building in the city. They got to get away with everything because of that. In the hot girl paradox, at some point, the hot girl's gonna hit 50, 70, 90, 110, and is not going to be able to treat people horribly based on their looks anymore. New York City cannot continue to ask $60 to $500 per square foot for office and retail real estate based on the fact that they have all this foot traffic and all these people there. That is going to have to change, and that is going to be very, very painful for them because of their budget. If you take a look at the Comptroller website for New York City and their budget, it looks like here they are expecting about $101 billion in revenue, and of that, they are expecting that approximately $31 billion of that be property taxes. So almost one-third of New York City's entire revenue is based on the valuation of these properties. And if nobody is willing to rent those properties or purchase those properties because they're insanely overpriced, that means that goes down. That means that that one third of New York City's budget is about to get a massive kick in the nutsack. And that is going to be incredibly, incredibly, incredibly painful for the city unless they are able to actually shrink this shit a little bit, which good luck with that. Last year, Atlanta's tax revenue was projected to decline by 5.7%. Finding and retaining government employees has been a problem in New York, where public sector salaries haven't kept up with inflation. Day-to-day -day operations and essential government services such as public transportation, trash collection, and street cleaning would undoubtedly take a hit from a hamstrung city budget. Even if this went down by 20%, I feel like I speak for most New York City taxpayers when I say that you have over $80 billion. Figure it the fuck out. 
Seriously, there is no reason for the budget to be this fucking high and to go up year after year after year. The most fucked up part of all of this is that they realized, they realized in 2020 and 2021, the economy's a little shaky. We had the pandemic and the worldwide lockdowns and all that stuff. That's going to reverberate across the economy, likely for the next 10 to 20 years. So what are we going to do? Increase our budget. No, stop doing this stupid shit. I tried to figure out over the past two to three years how I can spend less money. I'm moving to Texas. I'm moving to a place where I'm going to pay less money in rent, less money for a house, where my store is going to cost less, where my expenses are going to cost less, where I'm going to have less employees. I can look ahead just a little bit because I can rub my two brain cells together that are left after inhaling solder frames for the past 10 years and see that maybe I should not continue spending more fucking money as the world economy is falling apart. But they can't. And I have no sympathy for them. It comes as no surprise then that in recent months, the combination of a stagnant flow of tax receipts and hollowed out downtowns has spooked city leaders. At a recent conference, the mayor of Seattle, Bruce Harrell, expressed concern about tax revenue. The fact of the matter is that there will never be the good old days where everyone's downtown working, he said. London Breed, San Francisco's mayor, told Bloomberg that life as we knew it before the pandemic is not going to go back. In the National League of Cities 2022 survey, almost a third of cities said they'd be in difficult financial situation in 2023 once federal funds dissipate. In the event of a recession, things could look much worse. Stop spending so much fucking money. It, they, they, they said it right over here that things are changing. Their own words, life as we knew it before the pandemic is not going to go back. Spend less money. I have to do that in my household. I have to do that in my business. If there's going to be a downturn, if things change, you have to do it too. Suck it up and deal with it. The solution to the office housing conundrum seems obvious. Turn commercial spaces like offices into housing. Empty offices can become apartments to ease the housing pressure while also bringing more people back to downtown areas. But again, this, 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 I, I hear a lot of people saying that. Just turn all the offices into apartments. Easier said than done. Many of the offices that I've been to in the past don't have windows. Again, like the idea, the idea of having the, quote, window office, the corner office with a window, is something that was cherished. That's something that you get once you get a promotion. Many people have offices without windows, and they're willing to accept working in an environment without a window. But many people are not willing to accept living in an environment without a window. Um, this is very costly, and they mentioned that in the article. The cost of construction is just so high, and even if you set aside the specific issues related to conversions and just think about the economics of building anything, it's just gotten very difficult. Another barrier for office to residential conversions is local housing rules. To turn commercial buildings into housing, they would have to be rezoned, which requires input from community members and local officials to meet specific requirements. So this would require New York City government to have a brain and get their shit together. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. Good luck getting them to agree on anything. I have recordings in this channel where they can't even tell me what their own goddamn rules are for running a repair shop. I had to, I had to go back and forth for a year with somebody over an audit in New York because they could not read the papers that I sent them. I assure you, nobody, and I mean nobody, is going to decide to invest billions of dollars of their own money into converting all of these buildings across the state into housing when there are so many rules, so many people that don't even know what the rules are, and just, oh my God. One of the, you know, here's one of the funniest things. When I was looking at potentially renovating my old store location, every contractor that I spoke to, and I mean everyone, I mean people with like 50 reviews on Yelp, five stars, great ratings, not people who should be doing things against the law, would just show up and like, they would just speak openly about how, okay, so we're going to do this and we're going to build a wall here so that nobody can see that we're working without a permit. And I'm like, you don't, like, we haven't even shaken hands yet, and you're telling me how you're trying to get around permits. I was like, that's the way you have to do it to get anything done in the city. It's kind of accepted. Nobody's going to want to work in this environment. Nobody's going to want to build something in this environment. Nobody's going to want to deal with New York City government to literally change all these buildings. They are going to be taking on massive financial risk. This is going to be very fucking expensive. And at the end of the day, it may not even be economically viable, and they're going to have to jump through hoops to do it. Who's going to want to deal with that shit? And they actually touched on that in the article. Housing developers may not want to put themselves in precarious political situations, okay, that's one way to put it, or go through resource draining approval processes, better way to put it, for a high-risk project with potentially significant financial downside. Again, no shit. Who wants to deal with building in a city that doesn't know what its own effing rules are? This is something that's going to come back to bite them in the ass. So the three points I really want to go over here, and really want to hammer home, A, this is a problem pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, a lot of New York City and a lot of New York State was empty with retail space for lease signs everywhere, not just for office, but also for retail ground level stuff. And this was a problem before you had COVID in enter the public psyche at all. The second thing is that 
you cannot keep asking people to go back to the way things were and expect that they will because the way things were before already sucked. These places were empty pre-COVID. People couldn't afford this shit pre-COVID. They were looking for an excuse to not have to pay for office real estate anymore because it didn't make sense. Now they have one. People figured out they can do remote work. Why are they going to go back? And this is something I went over a few months ago when I was talking about Mayor Eric Adams, talking about everybody going back to the office, the governor saying that everybody should go back to the office, Kathy Holchel, so that we can all thrive. So that who can thrive? Why? If a company is able to pay their employees and their owner more money as a result of not paying insane rent because people could do work from home, why wouldn't they do that? Can you explain what's in it for the workers? Can you explain what's in it for the business owners? Can you explain what's in it for the managers? There are certain jobs I have in my company where somebody does need to be present. They, again, they're not going to be able to handle a customer that walks into the store from home. That just technology for that ain't good enough yet, doesn't exist yet. However, if I have somebody that does nothing but respond to emails, like that's their only job is responding to emails, why do I need them to be sitting next to me? Why is that necessary? And if that means that I can have a smaller space, if that means I can pay $5,000 a month in rent instead of $80,000 a month in rent, then why wouldn't I just pocket that $75,000 a month, make more money as a business owner, pay my employees better, and lead a better and lower stress life? Truly. And one of the things that they say here is, well, this is going to be bad for the businesses downtown. This is going to be bad for the city budget. This is going to be bad for everybody else. But one of the problems that I have with these mindsets is that they never talk about what's in it for you. They never talk about what it is that I get out of taking money out of my wallet and giving it to you. How is that going to benefit my life at all? And at some point, people do want to think about things that benefit them. They do want to think about not having to commute. They do want to think about being able to save a couple of thousand dollars a month or maybe five to six figures a year on rent. They do want to think about the additional time they get to spend with their family. They are not thinking about the fact that somebody who is dumb enough to sign up to pay $75,000 a month for this might have a precarious situation on their hands when talking to the landlord next month. Really, truly, honestly, that's not your responsibility. It is not your responsibility to pay this person's rent that was set at an insanely high level based on the hot girl paradox. It just isn't. It's time for these cities and these areas to accept what we all have to accept at some point in our lives. We're just not hot shit anymore. And once we're not hot shit anymore, we actually have to start treating people normally again, and we actually have to be nice and everything else. And we, and again, you know, again, we, we can't have $100 billion budgets anymore during an economic downturn. Maybe that's a little unreasonable. Maybe we should be a little bit nicer to the businesses in the area and everything else. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, hope you learned something. See you on the next video. Bye now.